everyone does have the same opportunities, nor do we all have the same abilities, but we all have something. We have the capacity to be faithful in our own condition, yet all people do not prove trustworthy when tested. Jesus was reminding us of this very sobering fact. The Lord's servants are stewards. You are stewards over whatever God has put you a steward over. They control things in their own lives which belong to God. How about your kids? They belong to God. Okay. How about your husband you don't get along with? Who they belong to? God. Are you trying to control things in your own lives which belong to God, which is everything in their life and person? One example of a stewardship God is especially interested in is the caring for and feeding of his people, the pastors, the leaders, feeding their people, feeding the sheep. It's very important to God. This is not a judgment we have, have made. The Bible makes this judgment for us. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man... I want you to turn this one, 1 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2, because I want you to look at it. I don't want you all to think I'm just throwing scriptures. I want you to see it, okay? Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Next verse, please. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. There's that word again, faithful. Faithful path. Well, I don't like going to that church because it's never growing and it ain't doing anything. Did God put you there? If God has put you there, you better hear the voice of God to move you out. Because if you move out and you're not in the will, you can get out of the will of God and everything go wrong. Uh, Trust me, it can go wrong. And then you're wondering, what is going on? Did you hear the voice of the Lord? Are you hearing what people tell you? You've got to hear it for yourself. Amen? You've got to hear it for yourself. Okay? I'm going to use, tell you some examples of faithfulness. Think of the patriarch, uh, patriarch Joseph, the son of Jacob. Do you all think Joseph was a faithful man in the Old Testament? Yes. He obeyed. This is really good here. He obeyed God even when his faithfulness brought him difficulties. Was, was Joseph a faithful person? Yes. Oh, he went through a lot. He was sold as a slave while carrying out his father's orders because his brothers were jealous. Was he being faithful to what his father asked him to do? Yes. That's Genesis 37, 13 through 29. He was thrown into prison because he was faithful to his master, Potiphar. And what did Potiphar's wife do? He tried to seduce him and he wouldn't go for it. Okay. Amen. Joseph was always faithful to God, and in due time, he was set down at the right hand of Pharaoh, ruler of Egypt. Isn't that awesome? Even though he went, he went to prison, he was blamed that he tried to take another man's wife. And I mean, just go, how would you like to be in that circumstance? And then you get thrown in prison. But you know what? God brought him to the top in the jail, everything. God did because he stayed faithful to his God which is our God. We got the better covenant too. Amen? How about Moses? Was Moses faithful? Yes. In all God's house? Numbers 12, 7. What does all God's house mean? It means that he obediently did all God asked of him. Moses did. Moses was characteristically enthusiastic for God, thus quite different from the Israelites with him. They were enthusiastic one day, grumbling the next, and idolaters soon after. Moses did not allow the people... Oh, listen to this. This is so good. Moses did not allow the people's attitude to deter his own obedience. Even though they were griping and complaining, he did everything God asked him to do. He stayed faithful on the course. Have we ever had gripers and complainers in here? I know none of y'all have done it. I have. Y'all can say I have. Okay? You didn't like something. Something didn't go your way, so you're griping and complaining. God has to deal with that in the church today. 
Well, I don't like who's leading praise and worship, and I don't like who's cooking the food, and on and on and on and on, whatever. We don't have that a lot here, but I'm just saying. That's what we do. Sometimes we're spoiled brats. Sorry, but that's true. Now, I've been one of those. We all have been that. In our soul, we just get spoiled brats, blessed, and, well, God, why you didn't give me this? And you're so blessed. We're so blessed. We act like spoiled brats sometimes. It's ridiculous, but we do. I know y'all love me, but I have to do what God told me to do. Amen. I lost my... Okay. So, remember, Moses did not allow the people's attitude to deter, to detour his obedience. Okay? You have to be obedient. He was an imperfect man. Was Moses imperfect? Yeah, he was like ourselves, and he too made his noble mistakes because he murdered someone and da-da-da. Yet, even though in those mistakes he did, he consistently did God's will the best he could. So I want to ask you, are you doing God's will the best you can where you are? Where you are right now. I love what Andrea brought out for, you know, when we were praising and worship. It really stood out to me. Everybody close their eyes and think where you were 10 years ago. I know exactly where I was. I wasn't married yet. And I remember coming down here on Saturday night being so engulfed in the presence of God. Nothing. I would not allow nothing to touch that Saturday night. I don't care what was going on. You better be dying or bleeding. But my kids knew I'm going to pray. That's where I was. That was three years before that for me. No, I was six yeah. years ago. Okay. And I'm not Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Praise God. You're here, too. Yeah. Amen. A lot of people don't live through stuff like that. Amen. God is good. You will recall, listen to this, you will recall that to others, God often spoke in dreams and visions. Oh, this is so good. But he did not do so to Moses. God spoke clearly to him. And he cites Moses' faithfulness as his reason for doing so. You and I can learn from that. If we obey, if we are faithful, that behavior enables us to hear God's voice more clearly when our father when our heavenly father speaks he expects and deserves our obedience 